Hi guys, so here we are with another game asset tutorial and um, this time I'm going to be looking at vertex colours in Lightwave. So I've been looking around for tutorials on this for a while and most of them seem to cover the uh, the airbrush tool and painting colours on your meshes and that's that sort of thing. But um, I find it a little bit clunky and you don't really get the results that you want. So I'm going to be showing you a different technique for creating your vertex colours and uh, hopefully you'll find it useful. Okay, so I brought my terrain asset over to layout and um, we've got one material, a uh, UV map with a repeating black and white texture and that's quite important uh, with this technique that it is black and white so that when we're applying colour to the mesh uh, it's not multiplying over existing colour and it gives you a little bit more control. So uh, the concept here is basically that we are we're going to paint with lights to create our vertex shading. So first thing that I like to do is turn off ray trace shadows. So we'll be using lots of lights and they kind of cross over and stuff like that. So uh, it's a little bit cleaner without the shadows on. So. I'm just going to start with this first light. I'm going to turn that into a uh, point light and give it a fall off. So I'm going to drop that into the pit here and give it a yellow colour. You can see there that um, it's actually gone white in the centre. So once we bake this um, vertex colour into the mesh, that's going to bake white, which is essentially no vertex colour. So you want to kind of lift it off the surface and just change your setting slightly just to um, prevent that from happening. Okay, so I'm just going to start duplicating lights now and changing the colour. Do this really quickly. So we've got an orange, I'm going to get a purple. You'll obviously spend a lot more time on it than I am here, but you'll get the idea. So I'm just clicking on Alt D to duplicate the lights. Let's get... Uh, some red in there. Just tweaking the values of the offset here. Sorry, the uh, the fall off distance. Let's get a lighter blue. Something like that should do us for now. Okay, so we're going to our surface editor and select our material and come across to the shaders tab. We've got uh, one called Surface Baker. So we'll double click that and we want to bake our entire object. Uh, we want to bake to our object. So that's going to bake to this vertex map here. Uh, I'm going to uncheck colour and diffuse and we're just going to bake our illumination. So that's going to create a, um, a vertex map called SB default. And so next thing to do is this will only bake if you've got your multi threading set to one thread. It's quite an old plugin, so um, that's one of the drawbacks. And but lastly, we need to make sure that our mesh is at least uh, partially in view with the camera. If your camera is facing away from the, from the mesh, it simply won't bake. So uh, just try and frame that. And then hit F9. OK. 
Okay, so we go back into the service editor now. Under the advanced tab, you'll see that uh, under vertex color mount, we've got SB default. So we can now save all objects, pop back over to modeler, and we've got this nice kind of atmospheric look which really would have been really difficult to get with uh, painting with the airbrush so next thing to add a little bit more uh, pizzazz to it uh, I'm gonna set this to be unlit so just cranking the luminosity up to 100 diffuse to zero and that gives us our pure color then so this looks pretty good but we can take it one stage further using a little tool called Vertex Paint. Um, again it's a archaic tool, I think it's 2005 or something this was last updated. So it's under Map, Vertex Paint and you get this little neat little window. You can actually do all your airbrush and, and so on in here as well similar to the uh, normal airbrush tool. So. I'm just going to change that to be vertex color and under the edit tab we've got these little uh, things here for brightness and contrast so we can start actually changing the uh, brightness and contrast of our vertex colors so you can start pushing them a little bit just to get a bit more intensity on that so hit apply, continue. We've got ones for color balance and hue and saturation. So you could, you know, saturate it or desaturate it as you feel. And it's a pretty cool little tool. So I'm just going to reset that and crank up the saturation slightly. Hit apply and continue. Then to apply that to your um, actual mesh, just hit save and that will save it to Modeler. And there we are. We've got a nicely lit, pretty cheap game asset with uh, low resolution texture but lots of variation.